good morning. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the fact about the fact that the there's a parallel between how we perceived um, rights for gay people back in the 60s when my whole life started and the way we perceive we perceive gender identity today. Now for the record, I want to at least first state um, the idea that gender identity in relatively rare instances is it can be opposite to birth sex in, in adults who have had consistent dysphoria throughout their childhood and into adulthood and who do do a transition. This is a small percentage of people compared to the people who are grow up to be gay adults, but, but that does mean that gender identity does exist as a concept, that you, you can make something of it. I do have a problem with the idea that schools want to teach this in a formal way to kids, particularly below high school, particularly before, before they have the science to really fully understand it, and want to indoctrinate them. I would call it indoctrination in the idea that you let people to choose pronouns and you make a big issue with, and you let people lay them, label themselves as something other than their biological sex, particularly non-binary. Um, and that in some cases you let them transition even starting much younger with, and the super, the degree of supervision, it's a matter of debate right now how good that supervision is. Um, there's been a lot of concern. A lot of reputable publications have supported some of the ideas, some of what the hospitals do, but it's obviously very controversial right now and very disturbing. And generally common sense would tell us that until they're well into their teens or approaching 18, young people don't have enough, you know, don't have enough cognition to really understand the consequences of some of the things that are done, you know. Um, and there's also a fact that, it, that there's this, an effect on other you know, people around them um, who have to be conscious of the idea of labeling people all the time, um, labeling themselves, questioning their own identity. Um, I What I really understand is the idea that what I went through is, well, you could have called me a sissy boy when I was growing up. Um, I was not competent in things that boys are supposed to be good at. Um, and I caught a lot of teasing and so forth and pressure from the schools, but I sort of got by. They kind of let me get a C in phys ed and pass and still graduate from high school with honors. Um, when I was in the army, um, you know, there was, I was thrown out of school for telling the dean of men that I was latently homosexual in 1961, that whole episode. And at the time, I was probably thought of as almost being like a non-male or a female in the dorm or someone and that that could be very distracting to other boys um, in their own socialization and their own confidence in themselves to have families themselves one day. I understand how in 1961 people would have thought that and of course this was McCarthyism at the time when gays were considered to be um, associated easily blackmailed even though that was circular logic you know at the time that they could be dra recruited by by the soviets and so forth there was a great concern about that at the time which was circular and not very well founded um, we uh, we got used to the idea throughout the 60s with the civil rights movement that people had to be treated better then we had stonewall in 1969 we had a very serious challenge to our community with the AIDS epidemic and even the politics of it, but we we kind of handled that with better behavior and then with medicine, which um, helped as the medicine that we developed dealing with HIV has in fact helped us deal with COVID, in, at least indirectly, in, in, in the past three years. So um, the idea that makes sense that, that I learned about after I came out again in the 1970s was living in New York City is that you could have a polarity you could have you could be a you could be a man 
and be a biological man and live that way, but in terms of your own personal growth, you had a polarity which could be psychologically masculine or psychologically fem feminine. That was an idea that was propagated at the Ninth Street Center by, um, and founded by a particular therapist named Paul Rosenfels. And the center stayed open until 1991, I think, in New York City. I had some involvement with it in the 1970s. Um, but the idea of polarity is more or less parallel to the idea of, bio, of gender identity, except that it was only for personal growth. It was not to be used for public activism. And in the last four or five years, is depth of the idea of gender identity has become another category with which people can be grouped as a marginalized group for civil rights laws and so forth. And so people are encouraged to label themselves and band together and be, be um, loyal to each other. Um, I think there's also, a, there's really a problem in that we are very judgmental of other people as individuals. And I'm very judgmental in people I want in my life, particularly intimately. Um, so we judge them as to how well they fit the expectations of their biological sex, creating another category, particularly non-binary, and then labeling itself and saying that we don't expect that out of pe out of everyone and letting them live their own lives differently is a way out of that. I understand that. Um, and even the non-binary category, for example, wouldn't require as much adjustment in the school systems. So I understand the appeal of it, even though for me it would not work. But that's my thought for today. Um, it's very much in the middle of the road. It's very fluid, automatic, ironically. So, um, but yeah, um, we, it may be that we have to get used to these new ideas and that are not as radical as we think they are, just like in the early 1960s, the idea of accepting the fact that gay men and women could have private lives and live productively maybe without having their own children was radical then. Uh, one of the things, of course, is that someone like me, given especially growing up the way I did, was not going to have my own family and have the same responsibilities. In some ways, I could turn that around and outflank it and actually live better, be better off, because I didn't, it didn't cost as much and I would have a lot less debt. So that's the other side of this whole coin.